Welcome to the Invite Health Podcast, where our degreed healthcare professionals are excited to offer you the most important health and wellness information you need to make informed choices about your health. You can learn more about the products discussed in each of these episodes and all that Invite Health has to offer at www.invitehealth.com slash podcast. First time customers can use promo code podcast at checkout for an additional 15% off your first purchase. Let's get started. When it comes to micro minerals in the body, there's one in particular that plays such a critical role to our overall health. When we look at heart disease, when we look at diabetes, when we look at maintaining healthy cholesterol, and oftentimes it's coined as the forgotten mineral. So today I want to talk all about chromium. I am Amanda Williams, MD, MPH, and chromium is one of those minerals. It's a trace mineral, but it's so easily forgotten. And when we look at how it is that we can actually have deficiencies in this, we can look at many people, um, athletes. Right now, you think about the Olympics, for example, and recognizing how hard these athletes push the physical capacity of their bodies. But we can also look at diabetics. We can look at people who are getting older in age. We can certainly look at pregnant women. These are people who are all at a greater risk of developing chromium deficiency. And when this happens, this can lead to an impairment of insulin function. And we have to make sure our insulin is responding to rises in blood glucose. So when we see this happen, this becomes a big red flag. So when you think about things like metabolic syndrome, for example, we have that trifecta of elevated triglycerides, we have the elevated glucose levels, we have increased uh, body fat, and if we also have a chromium deficiency or even insufficiency occurring, this can really exacerbate things. We know that we have to have chromium when it comes to energy production. So there's many different ways in which chromium is highly regarded within the biochemistry of the human body. So we think to ourselves, well, aren't we getting enough when it just comes to dietary intake? And the problem is, is that our diets for the most part oftentimes are lacking adequate chromium to keep up with all of the different biochemical utilizations of chromium. So this is why I wanted to to bring this up today because we know that chromium itself is utilized to support healthy blood sugar, to support healthy cholesterol, to support and target the triglycerides, as I mentioned. When we think about the normal cellular energy production, when we think about our endothelial cells, so even maintaining the vascular integrity, chromium plays a role into that. And many times we don't think about it like that, especially in the world of nutrition. Sometimes we get hung up on chromium being beneficial when it comes to helping to enhance insulin sensitivity and to support healthy glucose metabolism. And we overlook the many more things that chromium is actually doing. So especially when you think about that endothelial function, to think about the role that magnesium and chromium in combination really play. And there was a a study that was published back in 2016 in the Journal of Clinical Nutrition, looking at that combination of magnesium along with chromium. And they they did a study in patients who were exhibiting signs of insulin resistance. And they found that when they gave them chromium in combination with magnesium, and then they assessed them over the course of three months. So they had a placebo group, and then they had the group that was given the chromium plus magnesium. They had significant improvement in their fasting blood glucose, in their fasting insulin levels when they look at the insulin resistance index. Um, They were able to see all of these different indicators as to how beneficial the combo of magnesium along with chromium can be when it came to targeting healthy blood glucose. And 
At the end of the day, we know that magnesium and chromium are both playing a role when it comes to the vascular system as well. So, so many different ways in which chromium potentiates its benefits. A study that was published in the American Physiological Society looked at how chromium picolinate can actually lessen inflammation in diabetic nephropathy. And this is important because when we think about the long-term and the detrimental impact to the kidneys when it comes to glycation. And they were able to see that taking chromium picolinate could actually lessen the inflammation and the damage done. This was done through the Medical College of Georgia in Augusta, Georgia. And they arrived at their, their conclusion saying that, wow, we should really be considering patients who have diabetic nephropathy, that they should be taking chromium as a supplement. So I do think that when we see across the the spectrum, the way in which chromium is actually working, it is really very, very powerful. And we can get deep into the science on this. We can look at the different um, glucose receptors in the bodies and how it is that the chromium is actually working via means of activation of this. But at the end of the day, we we do recognize that it is vital for maintaining healthy glucose metabolism, that it is so important when it comes to healthy lipid and triglyceride production and transport in the body. When we think about energy, once again, energy metabolism, we think about our immune system. That's one of those areas where many times we get stuck on one thing. You know, you think of the immune system, maybe you think of vitamin D or vitamin C. But we have to have chromium in order for both the innate and the adaptive immune systems to properly function. And if we are lacking in this, then this really becomes quite problematic. Now, there have been misinformation, I would say, when it comes to chromium. And the problem is, is there are different types of chromium. So you have trivalent, you have hexavalent. And the hexavalent form of chromium is the form that you find in the kind of in the industrial world. This is the problematic form. So when you think about chrome, like chrome, a chrome bumper, for example. This is the hexavalent form, and this can be toxic if we inhale this in. So hexavalent is the problem. The trivalent is the form that you use in terms of dietary supplementation. So trivalent chromium is that essential micronutrient, which is completely different in terms of that hexavalent form. So when you're utilizing chromium picolinate, you're using that trivalent form. Now, when you see that someone starts to take chromium on a regular basis, and the amount can really vary, maybe 200 micrograms, it could be higher than that, depending upon what your you know current targeted use for the, the chromium is. But one of the things that I always say that you should clue into, especially if you, you do check your, your blood glucose level on a regular basis, is to you know see how is it that that chromium is actually impacting your blood sugar levels. Because if you're on a medication that's already lowering your blood sugar and then you take chromium on top of it, you don't want to get to a situation where your, where your blood glucose levels get too low. So it's always advantageous to, to stay on top of that. But the interesting studies to me come down to the cardiovascular ones. And there was a double-blind um, placebo-controlled trial looking at a combo of chromium and biotin. Okay, so we're using a B vitamin along with the trace mineral chromium and looking at how that combo can improve coronary risk factors in people who had high cholesterol along with type 2 diabetes. And they gave these patients 
chromium along with the biotin, and they assess them for looking at their blood glucose levels, they were looking at their lipid levels, and looking at lipoprotein levels, and they found that there was a significant improvement when it came to total cholesterol, when it came to their hemoglobin A1C, remember that's that long-term look at how your blood glucose is actually being managed. And they came to the conclusion that the intervention of chromium along with biotin can improve cardiometabolic risk factors. So this was a study that was done and published in the Journal of Cardiometabolic Syndrome back in 2007. So this is why when we talk about just basic vitamins and minerals and why they matter so much, this is a classic study that shows that. That there is a reason why our bodies require these vitamins and minerals and what exactly those vitamins or minerals are doing in combination and working synergistically together to support all aspects of our overall health. So hopefully now you have a better understanding of what it is that chromium is doing in the body, why we need it, certain times that people could potentially have low levels of chromium, and why it may be advantageous to consider having chromium as part of your daily supplementation routine. So I want to thank you so much for tuning into the Invite Health Podcast. You can find all of our episodes for free wherever you listen to podcasts or by visiting invitehealth.com slash podcast. Do make sure that you subscribe and you leave us a review. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and we will see you next time for another episode of the Invite Health Podcast.